VLOOKUP in Python, or at least a VLOOKUP equivalent in Python using the pandas module and a left join. The only difference is we're gonna add a nested list. So that's a little bit of a deviation from how it's typically done. We'll get into that in just one second, but in another video, someone had left a comment asking me what my studio here looks like. So I wanted to give you a quick shot of that. So here's one view. There you go. And here's a different view. You can see I'm covered in, uh, covered in green cloth here. All right, I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller here. And the data set that we're gonna use is my real actual Nikor bill, okay? So this is what I downloaded from Nikor and uh, what they provided was the reading date and meter reading, office name, reading details, and daily consumed therms. On this other tab, I have the reading date and the daily average course, a uh, daily average temperature that corresponds to the reading date. You can disregard these two test columns here are not really important at the moment. I'll talk about them in a little bit. But for right now, what I want to accomplish is I want to bring the daily average temperature into, into this Therms tab. Traditionally, in Excel, what we would do is a VLOOKUP. So we'll use our reading date as our lookup value. And then our table array is going to be columns A and B here. And then our column index number is gonna be two because our table array is two columns wide, reading date and daily average temperature. We want to return the second, um, second column in that array, which is daily average temperature. So we use two. And finally, the range lookup is false. Oops. Is false. It is always gonna be false in my 17 years in finance and accounting, I have never seen anyone use true for any reason. I've never heard of anyone using true. So in the comments below, if you've got a, a use case for um, for true, then do me a favor, drop that in there. What's your use case for true? I'd love to hear that. All right, so to get our VLOOKUP across all the rows here, just double click there and that brings it down. Now we've got our daily average temperature brought into Therms using VLOOKUP. But this is not an Excel tutorial, right? So we don't really care about doing this here. We want to mimic this VLOOKUP using Pandas, using Python. So let me go ahead and bring up my IDE. My IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, if you are not already familiar. Um, any IDE will work with this, any Python interpreter, it just has to, it has to be a Python interpreter. Any one you want to use will be fine. But, uh, you know, as a side note, when I was transitioning from Excel VBA guy over to Python data analyst, you know, this is, this is like the first thing that uh, I was curious about. I wanted to know how to do a VLOOKUP using Python. And when I Googled it, there was no shortage of results. I did it again, I Googled it again just now, and I came across ah! 1.6 million results. That's a ton, right? I've gone through a lot of those tutorials and I watched a lot of those videos when I was learning and they always kind of got me close, but it was never quite exactly what I was looking for. So this, I think, is the video I wish existed when I was learning. So to start, we're gonna type import pandas as pd, and I'm operating under the assumption that you've already got pandas in your Python library. You've already got the pandas module. If you do not, then what you can do to get that uh, installed is open your command line, and in your command line, you can type pip install pandas, or pip3 install pandas. Um, that, should, uh, that should get it, but Assuming you've already done that, let's go ahead and build our first data frame. I'm gonna call it DF1 because I'm completely unoriginal at naming things. So I'll do PD dot, PD dot lead Excel. We'll type our path there. 
And if you're wondering why I'm putting a little R there, that translates the path into a string literal. If I don't put that R there and I try to execute this statement, then the Python interpreter will yell at me. And what I mean by that is it gives me a syntax error. It says it can't, um, can't decode the bytes. So let me get rid of that by translating this to a string literal. Now Python can read the location of my data set. In this case, my Excel file, my Nightcore Excel bill. That's my first argument. My second argument is going to be the sheet name. Once you tell pandas what Excel file you want to work with, then you next have to specify the Excel sheet that you want to work on, or that you want it to look at. In this case, my sheet is called therms. That's my second argument. My third argument is now going to be my header. And in this case, since my headers are in the first column, excuse me, my first row in my Excel spreadsheet, my headers will be equal to zero. If you're wondering why header equals zero when it's in the first row, it's because Python starts counting at zero and not one. So when it's in the first row, zero. That's my third argument. My fourth will be use calls. I've now told it what Excel file to look at, what, what tab to look at. Now within the tab, within the sheet itself, I need to tell it which, which um, columns. In this case, it will be A through E. Let's execute that statement and that should, DF1 should now match my therms tab. Let's inspect the data frame, and it looks like it does. We've got reading date, meter reading, office name, reading details, and daily consume therms. Taking a look back at our spreadsheet here, that is exactly the case. Perfect. So let's get our next data frame here. It's gonna be equal to, DF2 is equal to read, Excel, same thing, our path, sheet name, this time will be daily temp, third argument will be header equals zero, fourth argument will be calls. All right, let's execute that statement. And if we've done it correctly, which it looks like we did, the F2 will now mimic my daily temp sheet. So we've got reading date, daily average temperature, test and test one. All right. So we brought both of those tabs into data frames. Now what we want to do is a join, a left join from uh, DF2 to DF1. Most tutorials will show you to do it like this. And they're not wrong, by the way. The tutorials are not wrong. This is just the way that I like to do it. So traditionally, other tutorials will show you to do it like this. DF3 is equal to pd.merge df1, df2 as my second argument, how equal to left, my third argument here, and then on is equal to reading date. And if you're wondering how is the type of join that we are executing, on is the column that both data frames have in common. So that is how the pandas module knows which to match up with which, because they both have that reading date. So it'll join them on the reading date. Hope that makes sense. Let's execute this statement. And now my DF3, my third data frame, contains everything, right? Reading date, meter reading, office name, reading details, daily consumed therms, daily average temperature, which we wanted, but then test and test one, which we did not want, right? I did not want the test columns because I've never, no one has ever done a VLOOKUP and ended up with extra columns. So if we're going to mimic VLOOKUP in Python, then we should only end up with the column that we've done a VLOOKUP on. 
right? We only did the VLOOK up here on the daily average temperature. That's all we wanted. So that gets close because it brought in the column, but it also added extra stuff. And there's, you know, developers out there screaming at their screen right now going, but Ryan, you told it to use columns A to D. That's true. But when you have a very large data set, which is often the case in finance or accounting, you don't always know which columns. So we want to be very clear in telling pandas which columns we want to look at. And we will do that like this with a nested list. So what I mean by that is we'll do df4 is p equals pd.merge again, df1 to df2 nested list here, and we're gonna tell it reading note, uh, reading, sorry, reading date, excuse me, and daily average temperature. And then again, we're gonna use how is equal to left, and then on is equal to reading date. All right, so let's execute this statement. And if we did it correctly, then our data frame four, DF4, should look exactly like our therms tab. And it looks like a success. We have our reading date, meter reading, office name, reading details, daily consume therms, and then our daily average temperature. Perfect. This is exactly like we wanted and mimics our therms tab, or mimics our VLOOKUP perfectly. So this is a, this is a beautiful thing and it is almost like magic. <laughs> All right. You know what, I hope, uh, I hope you've learned something here. I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, drop them in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear everything, anything that you have to tell me. Um, so I hope this helps you. Do me a favor and like and subscribe. That would really help me out. I appreciate it. Thank you very much and hope you have a great day.